Now that we've created our login form that should be submitting to our create action, we see that all our tests are failing because our create action doesn't exist. So let's go ahead and try to supply that create action. Uh, and so what we need to do then is edit our controllers and go ahead and like we did with the new, let's start off with just an empty action first and, and see where that leads us. So we'll go ahead and run our tests here now and we should be able to see that our create action is now there and now we're going to see different kinds of errors as we try to submit our login user and, and see what happens. So if we go back through here uh, again we have our, our same problem as we did with our create action with our users and that's that we don't have a, a template that we want to, to respond um, with. And uh, we can think about uh, how we want uh, this uh, to work here. This is a little bit more difficult because how we want to respond is different if the login is successful from if we want to um, if the login is unsuccessful, we, we want to respond very differently. Uh, but let's, uh, I don't know, start with something and, and go from there. So let's assume that the, the login I is successful. Well, um, we, we should probably review what our, our tests say in, in that case. So let's open up our test and this is our login pages and we um, haven't told our tests where that login should go. So we have complete freedom as far as our tests are concerned um, on what and where we want that to land. So with that freedom then we can go back here and we can just pick a random spot uh, right now um, and I'll tell you this is not where we're going to end up with. The only spot that we can logically end up is the list of our users. Every other spot like um, pointing to that particular user, we don't, we don't have that information quite yet. Uh, or some home page that we haven't built yet. So the only place that we can end up is, at, is redirecting back to our users path here. So if we do that, now we are going to be able to try to log in and fail. So we go ahead and we see we are down to just uh, six failures. And um, they are things like we didn't sign in here, we don't have the failure to sign in, we don't have the success to sign in, um, we don't have these links about being able to log out, and um, so we, we can't proceed. So these, these are exactly the, the kinds of, of things uh, that we, we want to be able to handle. And of course we have um, this one which is that uh, we're trying to log out and we can't get to that method right here. All right, So let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and start with, with this first one right here. How do we know when we have or have not properly logged in so that we can give this uh, danger invalid m message that we, we want to be able to, to do. Well, back in our create here, we, we need to be able to look up that user that the person typed into the form and compare the password that they typed in to the password that's in our database. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to have to look up a new um, feature in, in Rails and that is 
uh, up till now, we've supported looking up a user by their ID. And so I'm going in console to, to show off a new feature here. If I call the user model and I do find, I can look for user ID, say, 4, and it returns some user, and that happens to be Jane Doe. But I can also look up by other attributes, and the way we do that is user dot, and then we say find by. And this method will take an attribute name. So let's look up Jane Doe by her name. And we can do that, Jane Doe. And that will look up Jane Doe not by her ID, but by her name. And we get the exact same thing. We can do it um, also by uh, email as well. We can look it up by her email and get up the exact same thing. And just to show that I, I'm not taking advantage of a previous find, we can look up some other user. We can uh, look up, uh, I don't know, if I go back to our web page here and we look at our list of users, let's look up uh, testing three right here. So I'm going to look up testing three. We haven't done that in this console at all, but when we do that, we find out that there's not a user because there's a space in there. And now we see that it works. We also see what the return value is when that find fails, that being a nil. So now that we know about this find by ability, we can go ahead and do, use that here because what we want to do is we want to do user.findBy and what we want to find them by is the name that they typed in to the, the into the form. Uh, and uh, if you'll remember in the form, well, let, let me not just make you remember here, so save that, edit our app views logins, uh, sorry. logins. You'll remember that right here we saved, we said to save that username in our params username or to look it up if we've looked at it before in params username. So we know that edit our app controller login controller that this uh, name that we're going to look up is going to be in params under username. So that is going to find that user. And uh, let's um, go ahead and store that into a variable called user. So now we've loaded that user, and we know that either it's going to return an object like this, or it's going to return nil. So what we want to do is um, if we have an object that's not nil. So we can just say if user. That's the idiomatic way in Rails of being able to say not nil. So if the user is not nil, and now we need to check that the, the password that was passed in is the same as what's in the user. So we can say in user dot password equals the value that we got sent with our form here. Alright, and then we can do now now we have the structure here to to be able to handle this. Now what we said we were gonna look at was failure first, so let's just leave this uh, part the, what we had before, we redirect to the user's path and, um, on supposed success and, and handle the error message. Well the error message, let's look back at our, our test failure here, expects us to have alert at danger level, so let's create an error message that is a flash, if I can spell correctly, um, and it's danger and we know it has to start with invalid so let's just do invalid username or password right we're not going to help the 
malicious person who's trying to break into our site and tell them whether it was a bad username or a bad password because we're not going to tell them if this find by failed or if this comparison of the password failed. Uh, it's a little uh, way that a trick that malicious people sometimes get into bad sites where they say, oh, that username doesn't exist. And you say, oh, great. I don't have to try a bunch of passwords for that username anymore. Well, this way, they don't know if that username doesn't exist, and so they have to try passwords for bad usernames as well as good usernames. And then what should we do with a bad password? Well, they tried to log in. It didn't work. We probably want to give them the chance to log in again. So uh, let's go back to our new action, the, the login action. So we're going to do render new. Um, we could do a, a redirect here, um, but it, it doesn't matter in, um, in the sense that uh, they're, they're going to see the same behavior. Uh, but because we're doing a render and not a redirect, we need to change this flash to flash.now. And um, you should review if you don't remember why. The reason why we're not doing a redirect here is because there's no, we don't have to worry about the um, post redirect get error. We want them to post again. They're, we're sending them back to a form and so that's not an issue and so by not doing a redirect we're saving a round trip between the browser and the server uh, because we don't tell the browser oh go ahead and get that form that I want you to fill out again we just send them that form directly so now we have an attempt to fail. So let's see if we can support failing to, to log in. So we run our tests here and they are processing and now we see five failures rather than six and if we scroll up through here you will see that the failure path doesn't um, fail anymore. Instead, we're now having this error with the success message that doesn't exist. And, and we can quickly go ahead and put in what, what we know needs to be here, and that is another flash message, this time the success level. And in here we should have some message like I don't know, um, uh, logged in, something real simple. It can always be improved upon later. And if we save that and run our tests, now we, we won't see the, the complaint about this message. So now we run our tests and we see that there are only four failures here instead of five and and now they're all complaining of, about this login link or not having the destroy action which is not a surprise because we haven't done that either of those pieces of functionality yet uh, I haven't showed doing this through the web browser now and that's the last thing I want to do uh, before this episode is over because this logout functionality is going to require some more thinking uh, about how things work and we'll, we'll need a little background to do that. But let's watch how this works in the web browser. So we're not going to our users resource anymore. Now we're going to our logins resource and we want to go to the new logins. We, we want to log in as a, a new user here. Ah, and we need to of course um, start up our server. So once we start up our server here, we can go ahead and re-log in to, and um, let's just do 
uh, John Doe as an example. Well, not Doe's. John Doe. And uh, type in the password. There's a login button just off screen here. And when I click on it, you can see that we got our login message. So we we're able to go through the successful logged in stage. And if we do um, something that is uh, a bad username, and well, of course, it doesn't matter what password we type in here, we're going to get the message that it's an invalid username or password. And let's actually provide a good username here. We'll go back to John Doe, but I'm just going to put garbage in here. We get the same uh, error message. 